And you're listening to Ask the Experts Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. I'm John Wolf. We have with us Roger Wakefield, the owner, operator, founder of Texas Green Plumbing. Their website, texasgreenplumbing.com, and they've got plenty of information, is linked to videos, etc. on that website, by the way. His number, 972-442-4101, 972-442-4101. Our number, if you have a question, 214-787-1190. Now, you mentioned about sending other people out on jobs. For do you, do you employ just a certain quantity of plumbers, or are there different types of plumbers that you need to have in your corral, so to say? There are different types of plumbers. I came up, when I first got into plumbing, I started as a commercial construction plumber. So the, the differences really are there's construction and there's service. So you're either building high-rise buildings or houses, Service, you're either repairing houses, apartments, condos, commercial buildings, anything like that. If they call, they need a remodel, they need a sewer unstopped, they need a faucet dripping fixed. Those are really the different types of plumbers. Now, me, there, there's also different levels of plumbers. You, you bring in apprentices and teach them the trade as they grow. We are a union service company, so our apprentices go through the apprentice trainingship program through the United Association. The good thing about that is that they get training two nights a week, and it's training in everything from blueprints and drawing to soldering to brazing to welding to cutting to how to plumb a house and, and what is code. It also, in a, the plumbing industry, it, it also, here in Texas, the United Association also teaches medical gases. So you have to get your med gas endorsement before you get out. So there, there are different type plumbers. Once you get into a residential service company like we are, you can hire apprentices, you can hire tradesmen, you can hire journeymen, and then I am a master plumber. And you have to be a master plumber in order to own a plumbing company or not on it, that's not true. Every plumbing company has to hire at least one master plumber to register their license. Some of the bigger companies in town aren't even owned by plumbers. They're owned by financial companies. So to have a, a company that's actually owned by a responsible master plumber and involved in the business every day, to me is a benefit because it's not all about finance and numbers to me. It's about doing the job right. Well, you mentioned a company has to have a master plumber. Do people ever call and say, I want a master plumber sent out? Not really. Mo I don't think most consumers know the, the difference between uh, an apprentice, a tradesman, a journeyman, and a master. A an apprentice is, is someone just starting out up to 4,000 hours. At 4,000 hours, they can take their tradesman exam, which allows them to walk into any house any single family dwelling, and do anything plumbing. So after just two years as an apprentice, they feel that they have enough experience and education to walk in any house and, and do that job. At 8,000 hours the, is when they can get their journeyman license. That's where most plumbers start feeling comfortable enough to completely do everything by themselves and on their own. What are the employment numbers like? Are 100, I hear doctors, 100% employment, dentists, 100% employment. Is it that way in the plumbing field if somebody's thinking, I, I want to get into something else? It, it really, uh, I'm going to say, I can't tell you it's 100%, but it's not far from it. With, with me being involved in the union here in Dallas, I know that we're always looking for plumbers. We, we, we do some of the biggest jobs in town, and since I've come along, now they're doing some of the smallest jobs in town. When I first got in the union in 97, it was all commercial. Now, in the past, I, I guess I signed a contract with the union about three years ago, two years ago, somewhere on in there, that I, I was one of the first service companies in town to do that. But I like the benefits that it allows my guys, that they make good money, they have great benefits, and... It, to me, it's easy to keep them as plumbers because they've got a great deal. It's, it's a good gig. Do they work for you on a full-time basis, or do you just have their, the network and you call, Joe, can you go over to this house and fix this? Or 
my plumbers work for me full time. Mm-hmm. Th- there are plumbing companies that just sell work and then, then they sub it out to plumbers. We believe that if we bring our guys in, we train them, we work with them, we get to know them. At Texas Green Plumbing, we want to build a culture. We want to have the best customer service. We want to do the job right. And I think our guys enjoy that. They, they, they love the fact that we really care about our customers. It's not always about the money. We've taken jobs and got into jobs where we didn't make as much money as we could. We've done jobs where we've lost money. But at the end of the day, we treat our customer right, and we want to do what's right for our customer. Mm-hmm. Do people ever ask you, let's say, and maybe it's somebody who met, met you in a non-plumbing situation, finds out what you do, if for preventive information, advice, or what they could do to improve their house for the long run that when they don't have a problem at that moment? Absolutely. One of the big questions that we get is water heaters. We did a blog and a video on this just the other day. Taking care of your water heater, if you've got a new water heater or your water heater is just within the past couple of years, flush it. Hook a drain hose up to the bottom, open the valve, flush out your water heater. You want to get the calcium and magnesium out of the bottom of it. It makes it less efficient, and it also starts leading to the demise of your water heater. One thing I also recommend to people is if you're getting a new water heater, put an anti-scale kit or a whole house water filtration system in. There's having so many problems in Plano right now with chloramine in the water. And, guys, there's filtration systems that take that out. I hate to tell Aaron Barakovich that Hmm. chlorine in the water is a good thing, but if we don't have chlorine or chloramine, and and I'm not riding the political bandwagon or anything, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to know we've got clean, healthy water getting to the houses. Once it gets there, it's like carrying home a head of lettuce from the store. There's pesticides on it, guys. Unless it's 100% organic, I hate to tell you, it's there. When you get home, you need to rinse it off. A whole house water filtration does that. If you install a whole house water filtration system on your house, that chlorinated and chloramine water, when it arrives, that filtration system will take it out to where now when it gets into your distribution system inside your house, You're not absorbing it when you take a shower. You're not absorbing it when you cook with it. And you're not absorbing it when you drink. Where do you put this? Before the water heater? I installed one on my house. Different houses are different. We installed ours in the garage. And where my water line comes in, we dug down to that water line at the valve box. We ran a line over, up, in through the garage wall, went into the filtration system, came back out, went down, went over into that or tied back into it. We put a bypass system in. We ran a drain down because they do have to regen. Some of these water filtration systems I see, you need to change the filters every six months. The systems that we use at Texas Green Plumbing, our water filtration system, you don't have to do anything to for about 20 years. Can't beat that. Really? Now, you mentioned about how this you really love the state's regulation system. What happens if somebody has a plumbing job done, a fairly large job, and they at least question either the quality of the work or the pricing of the work. What are your, what are your uh, abilities to challenge it or at least have it looked at by the state? Quality of the work, hopefully you're, you're getting it inspected. You can ask your plumbing inspector when he's there, what he thinks. It's really funny. One of the lending companies in town, I went to a networking event with realtors, And she talked to me, and we had done an installation of, I believe, two water heaters in her attic. And when I walked in and she saw me, she came up and hugged me. She says, I want you to know the plumbing inspector asked me, who who did this? And she told him who it was, Texas Green Plumbing. When he looked at it, he said, I want you to know this is put in better than they're normally put in. He says, normally plumbers don't worry about are the lines straight are the solder joints wiped? Is it nice and neat and clean and insulated? He says, this looks very, very professional. He said, not sad to say, I don't see this all the time. So it's a big difference. Very good. And again, you mentioned Texas Green Plumbing, your company. If somebody may have just hopped in the car. The company is Texas Green Plumbing. Roger Wakefield, who's with us, is the owner of the company. And their, their phone number is 972-442-4101. TexasGreenPlumbing.com is their website. And uh, 
what got you to, I mean, it's a big step to open any kind of company. Uh, what got you to, motivated you to start Texas Green Plumbing? Was it something organic, so to say, or was it just, hey, I want to own my own business. I don't feel like working for somebody else. Yeah, I had a brain fart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was actually in, I, I was in a meeting at the company that I worked at before, and I was director of operations and construction. And the owner was talking about what she was doing, what our, what the company was doing in their service side to make them better. And one of the things she says, look, we want to focus on customer service and training. And she named off some other things. And I just asked her, I said, okay, so what, what are you doing for customer service? She says, what do you mean? I said, well, well how are you excelling in customer service? It, what kind of training are you doing? She says, well, we're not. Our guys know what to do. That's not an approach we take. And from that day forward, I knew I wanted to do it, and I wanted to do it different, and I wanted to do it better. We have a huddle every morning. We have our guys together 30 minutes to an hour. We do training on customer service. We do training on plumbing. We do training on our straightforward pricing guide. We do, we do training on everything that we can think of. We want to make sure our guys understand what to do and how to do it right. Do you contact com uh, former customers when they, you have, if you haven't heard from them for a while to ask them about uh, how things have worked out and that sort of thing or if there's anything else they need to be done? We do. We, we go back and read our reviews. We, we get mostly five-star reviews, and, and I'm very proud of that. I have customers. I, I ran into a customer yesterday. I went out and looked at I had to run a camera through her sewer, and yes, I did that myself. But I went out, and I was talking to her, and she says, I want you to know I saw you on next door, and everybody there that commented about you had nothing but great things to say about you. That's like that, that makes me smile bigger than anything. And, and you have a right to be proud because in certain fields like dentists or plumbing could be one of those where people are like, oh, God, I don't want to kind of get the plumber out here. I know it's going to be super expensive and will he do the job right? And it's things that uh, are past the handyman level uh, of, of risk. But uh, what would you tell people as far as the most important jobs to stay on top of are? If they're looking around their house, trying to not look, trying to not avoid seeing something that might cost them a little money. Nine out of 10 homes have a leak. I hate to say that, but, but it's true. I hate true. to hear it. <laughs> with, with Earth Day coming up, and, and Texas Green Plumbing is going to be out at Earth Day this year, y'all. If you've never been there, it's really neat. I personally won't be able to be there, but Texas Green Plumbing Man is going to. And if you have not seen our leak detection superhero, it's worth going out to Earth Day just to see that. But leaks are huge. Look at your meter. Go check your meter every now and then. See if it's moving. See if it's turning. Look at your water bill. If you detect or notice an unusually high usage of water, make sure that you do something about it. We've gone out with people thinking they have a leak under their slab, and it turned out that they had a toilet that was running slow, and they didn't even realize it. So leaks can occur everywhere. Guys, they cost you money whether you realize it or not. And a toilet running can cost you hundreds of dollars a year. Why waste that money? And you're wasting water, too, on top of it. Absolutely. Besides that. Okay, we're going to take another quick break here. We're talking with Roger Wakefield of Texas Green Plumbing. His website, texasgreenplumbing.com. His phone number, 972-442-4101. Our number here at Ask the Experts Radio Show, 214-787-1190. I'm John Wolfe. 